Ladies and gents, welcome to CG Reaction, and this is what's the biggest gun we could possibly build by the channel Real Life Lore. Yeah, this is just ridiculous. Is this this is related to I guess the you know those large guns that we see on all those I guess you know World War type videos and video games and things like that. I'm pretty sure people stop building them because I don't think that's a new thing. Why would you have that when you have guided missiles and things like that, intercontinental ballistic missiles? But still, this is a fun thing to think about, isn't it? I mean, I'm pretty sure there would have been some kind of a Nazi plan that Hitler was going to do, like build some gigantic uh, gun that could, I guess, reach to the space or something, kilometers and kilometers tall, some shit like that. There's always some Nazi plan somewhere, but who the hell knows? This is going to be a fun video. I've reacted quite a few real life lore videos already. If you haven't seen them, check out the cast of the playlist I've reacted for it, real life lore reacts and something like that. Check out the reacts on too, like CGP Grey, uh, you know, Wally Sarcastic Products and Internet Story and Tears 2, things like that. And yeah. Let's watch this one. And anyway, people, this is a real life floor video. It might get blocked. So I have to put checkered box there. But if it's a big issue, I uh, guess, you know, run original video side by side. And yeah, let's watch this one. This video is sponsored by Wargaming and their game, World of Tanks. The first 300 new users to use the code in the description will get three free days of premium time, 500 gold, and a free premium tank. Ever since the invention of gunpowder in China during the 9th century, humanity has made significant advances in perfecting the technology behind guns. But how large can a gun actually get? And how far away can a gun actually shoot a projectile away at? The answer starts with some context and history. The Paris gun was built by the Germans in 1918 and was by far the largest gun ever built up to that point. It was used to shell Paris from a distance of 120 kilometers away, or about the same distance from one side of Denmark over to the other side. It was transported along railroads and weighed 256 tons, which, you guessed it, is about the weight of 200 Toyota Corollas. I did it was guess 34 that. meters long and capable of firing a 106 kilogram shell to an altitude of 42.3 kilometers. The first shell fired from this gun in 1918 was the very first man-made object to enter into the stratosphere, and it took 182 seconds for the shell to finally make impact 120 kilometers away after leaving the gun's barrel. Fast forward to World War II, and the Germans were back at it again with an even- Of course, Nazi did it. Why wouldn't they? ...more ridiculously sized gun, this time called the Schwerer Gustav, which remains to this day the largest gun ever built that actually fired a projectile. Just take a look at its size compared with the biggest tank ever built, the Panzer VIII Maus. And like the Paris gun, it was transported by rail. But unlike the Paris gun, this monstrosity was over five times heavier at 1,350 tons, more than the weight of 1,000 Corollas. The barrel alone was 30 2.5 meters long, and it took 250 men to assemble the gun in three days. Once set up, the gun's caliber was 80 centimeters. That's impressive though, they assembled that in three days. I mean, 250 men, that's lots of people, and it's a, it's a war time, so obviously things get accelerated, but damn. Assemble that in three days, that's impressive. It's wide, and could fire one shot every 30 to 45 minutes. These shells weighed an impressive seven tons, heavier than the German-built Panzer I tank even was. Imagine a gun shooting a light tank a distance of 47 kilometers, and you'll begin to understand the power behind it. But it didn't last long. The Germans destroyed the gun themselves in 1945 to avoid it getting captured by the Red Army, and little advancements were made in supergun technology for from there until 1961 in that gentleman did shit like that and people wonder why Fran France gave up I mean they would have destroyed everything from Eiffel Tower to everything I mean this is after Poland obviously so well, every, every everybody already knew that how effed up uh, Hitler was and which length he can go to so you know when he sells Paris like that from the guns like that I mean, of course they're gonna give up. I mean, otherwise every culture and heritage structure would have been destroyed. And that wouldn't, be, wouldn't have achieved anything. They still would have had to, you know, concede defeat, I guess, in the end. So what would be the point to destroy everything? Most of the Paris that we see today wouldn't have existed 
if they put on resistance, I guess. They would have shelled them over and over again. Here, the US and Canadian governments started a joint research mission called Project HARP, which stood for High Altitude Research Project. Without getting into complicated details, the project basically tried to build a gun big enough and powerful enough to fire objects like satellites into space without the need for expensive rockets. One such gun was built in Arizona that had a caliber width of 41 centimeters and a barrel length of 41 meters, longer than the Schwerer Gustav. It fired a 180 kilogram projectile out of the barrel at a blistering speed of 2.1 kilometers per second, which briefly sent it into space and set an altitude record for guns at 180 kilometers high, which is a world record that still stands today if you're looking for something to do. Since the escape velocity of Earth is actually more like 11.2 kilometers per second, Harp was nowhere near capable of firing a projectile that could stay in space, and it was cancelled shortly after. But the head of the project named Gerald... Yes, somebody in the comments saying, and I guess that is true. I mean, uh, escape velocity implies that you want to leave Earth's orbit and go into the sun's orbit. Or even more than that. But, uh, you know, uh, if you want to orbit the Earth, it requires much less speed. I mean, like, you know, ISS, uh, how ISS orbits the Earth. I mean, if you want to orbit the Earth, like he said, it was for the satellites. So it wouldn't require that much speed. But yeah, as it, they would have still could have improved something, I don't know. Old Bull wouldn't give up so easily, so he met up with a guy a couple decades later who really liked the idea of big guns too, named Saddam, and got to work on a new gun co-named Project Babylon. A what? prototype gun called Baby Babylon was successfully built that had a caliber of 350 millimeters and a barrel length of 46 meters. It weighed 102 tons, and after being set up on a hillside, it was supposedly capable of achieving a firing range of 750 kilometers, enough to fire something from San Francisco all the way to San Diego. The actual non-prototype model that was never built, however, would have been far larger. Going by the slightly obvious name of Big Babylon, it would have had a caliber size of an entire meter. The barrel was going to be 156 meters long, nearly five times longer than the barrel on the Schwerer Gustav. Suspended from cables on a steel framework, it would have been over 100 meters high at the tip, and the complete mechanism would have weighed over 2100 tons. Since firing projectiles directly at targets would have been laughably inaccurate with this thing, it was going to be used instead like the harp gun and fire projectiles into orbit. These could have been satellites, or more sinister, guided weapons. Using onboard rocket boosters, these projectiles could position themselves over an enemy target or city and drop down using gravity to pull them down and gain kinetic energy while falling. It's unclear if this truly would have been possible for Iraq to accomplish, and we'll never know since Gerald Bull was mysteriously assassinated in 1990 outside of his apartment by unknown agents. Big Babylon is not, however. Yeah, mysteriously assassinated. Uh, we know who did that. So this is where that term comes from. Like, you know, uh, Saddam has the weapons of mass destruction. Because he's known to, you know, so interested in things like this. Huh, so it wasn't completely made a thing, like Saddam has weapons, of, I mean obviously it was, people just did that to use an excuse, but at least he has some basis towards it, like Saddam is known to have, you know, have interest in things like this. Damn, this is, I didn't know this man, this is, this is crazy the largest gun ever conceived to be possible. That honor probably has to go to the quick launch gun, which pushes the limits on how large guns can possibly get. While not yet built, the barrel is designed to be 1.1 kilometers long, much longer than the tallest building in the world is tall. It would be mostly submerged in the ocean and use hydrogen instead of gunpowder as its firing source. The claim is that it would be capable Why wouldn't you use hydrogen? That's the, you know, rocket fuel we use is. Why would, why would you use gunpowder nowadays? So this is more advanced, I guess. Firing a projectile at 6 kilometers per second out of the barrel, and then onboard rocket boosters on that projectile would speed it up to 7.8 kilometers per second, which could get supplies on the projectile into orbit. While not designed for military applications, Quick Launch is probably about the biggest gun that humanity could conceivably build right now. If you're looking to operate a vehicle like the Panzer I though, which was lighter than the projectile So basically you can use gun like that to like a supply basis in the space I guess. If you want to supply something to a mass, just aim it and shoot it there. You don't need rockets for that. This is good.
inspired from the Schwerer Gustav, then you should play World of Tanks next. World of Tanks is a free-to-play online action game that throws players into breathtaking tank battles across epic battlefields. Set in the same time... Yeah, people, uh, go to the original video page and click the link and support this channel. Yes, I mean, like I said, biggest gun thing was kind of an old thing during the World Wars and around that time. Then people just develop rockets, intercontinental ballistic missiles, even the smaller missiles because they are inter you know intercontinental ballistic missiles. Uh, they 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 basically uses their I guess uh, speed to explode. They don't even have to have explosion. They're so fast that they're going to explode on impact with an even greater explosion. So you know people they need guns like that. I mean yeah. So but seriously that. Saddam thing, I had no idea about that. Damn, Saddam had interesting things like that. So, uh, Bush organization didn't just out of the blue said that Saddam, you know, building weapons of mass destruction. He's known to show interesting things like that. So, at least there was some basis toward it. Yeah. I mean, this is an important thing. Biggest gun, like, you know, they're developing. That could, that could help with all the, you know, basically transporting things into space. I guess shooting something through the Mars space, if we have one in the future, it, it could make things easier. Alright people, that was the, what's the biggest gun we could possibly build by the real life lore. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the reaction on day, there's a link in the description, check out the card for all the playlists, check out the end cards and I'll see you next time.